What's up guys, this is Nock V. Um, for a while now I've wanted to do a video that sort of shows my production workflow and uh, things I do when I'm making music. Um, so this isn't going to really be a complete FL Studio tutorial or anything like that. There's a million and one videos like that out there. Uh, so really what I'm just going to be doing is showing tips and tricks, things that I do, um, habits that I have, whether they be bad or good or, you know, make things sound kind of cool. Um, so yeah, with, uh, with my last track against the world, I actually, um, recorded all the footage of me making pretty much the chorus. Uh, so you see pretty much everything from how the kick is done, how the bass is made, the lead synth, which is actually the first thing I do. The first thing I do is make the lead synth. Um, and yeah, so from start to finish the entire chorus section, um, is what's going to be shown in this video and how that's made. So, uh, let's play that. All right. So we got FL, um, Loading up Serum. Serum Serum is one of my favorite synthesizers. So really I'm just kind of tinkering around making some random crap in Serum. Um, so what am I doing? What am I doing here? So I'm doing this voiceover like after the fact. So I'm kind of like trying to remember what I was actually intending. So I've got a little bit of an LFO um, running over the wavetable position of this pulse sound. I think I pretty much scrapped this later on anyway, so like I'm, I'm trying to, I think I started with the intention of this being like a Sid kind of chip tuny kind of sounding synth, and I ended up scrapping that and going to like a super saw, um, you know, traditional lead, I guess. Yeah, reverb. I use a lot of the <laughs> standard FL, um, FL effects and I feel like I really should try and use something else. So yeah, I, when I'm when I'm working on leads, I kind of mess around a lot and just um, I actually sold my keyboard. So I like my um M Audio Axiom 49 key piano dude. So I just <laughs> mess around on the actual keyboard keyboard. So sometimes I play a lot with the same keys and um, to actually get a different scale sound, I tend to change the root note of what I'm working on. So I end up messing around a bit and changing the root note around to, to get something musically a little different than what I usually do. So I just mess around a lot on the um, keyboard trying to, trying to make some tunes. Sometimes I just stumble into something that sounds kind of cool and I try and remember what I've done. Um, which is essentially what happens pretty soon, I think. You sort of start to hear um, a little bit of the the Against the World tune. So here it is. So what I'm playing right now, the, the actual low note is essentially exactly the same as Against the World. Well, the upper notes aren't exactly against the world at all. When I actually start drawing it out in the piano roll, that's that's when the actual tune sort of comes together. Which I think is pretty soon. I've sort of felt at this point that what I've started working on sounds good. Ah, yeah, here we go. Opening up a piano roll and just uh, putting this out there. That's the uh, the low end. Thank you. 
This is probably one of the most easiest tunes I've had come together ever. Rarely do I just sort of draw something out and have it sound exactly the way I want to. So now I'm just kind of detuning everything and <laughs> turning it into what it actually ended up being. This is pretty rare for me as well. If you see the effects, um, the effects window, usually I have things like a preset template that I have where everything's named out and I've got everything sort of in there already, uh, organized for where I put certain things, where I put leads, where I put percussion instruments and stuff like that. This, this was just a raw template that I just started messing around with, or just a raw project file with nothing in it. So this sort of starts to sound like the, um, one of the layers to the lead synth. This is just about exactly the same as what I, what I end the song with. I think at this point I'm trying to remember how I even use FL12. I'm still used to FL11 a little bit. FL12, they sort of changed up the, the way effects are found and added and stuff like that. To be honest, I'm not a fan of the changes, but I'm getting used to them. Patcher. Ooh, loudness. Okay, so this is one of the bad habits I think I, I have. I produce music with mastering effects turned on all the time. And a lot of people I've heard sort of frown upon that and they say don't turn your master effects on while you produce, just leave them off while you're producing and then turn them on just for for exporting or for, you know, in fact, a lot of people say you shouldn't even master your own stuff, you should send your music off for other people to master. I don't exactly have that luxury, <laughs> but I, I'm always constantly comparing my music to other people's or my own even. so. When I listen to my music and it's not loud, it just doesn't sound powerful. So I produce with my mastering effects turned on just so that when I'm playing other music, my music doesn't sound shit compared to it because it's so quiet. Anyway, this sounds like a good kick. Um, chuck it into effects. Um, name a couple of things. So what I usually do with my kicks is I chuck camel fat on them and put in a bit of um, put on a little bit of compression and distortion. Clear the preset, turn on the compression, crank that up a bit. Um, turn on distortion, put tube distortion up just a tiny little bit. And then I get this kind of loud snappy kick that given a correct sample, given a good sample, it sounds good. And then I clone this and put this onto another channel and I use this for my side chain. So I tend to make a single side chain that gets used throughout the track. Um, it's something that you don't hear at all. So what I side chain with is not something you even hear in the tracks. So you can see it's quiet. And then I'll chain that over to the lead, put on a limiter, go to the sidechain compression, and you can see that kick is affecting the sidechain. So even though it's not an audible kick, it's something that affects the sidechain. This allows for things like um, sidechaining bass when there's actually no kick. So sometimes at the very last bar of a phase, um, I'll take out the kick, but the sidechain will still be affecting it because I don't have the kick actually being a sidechain, I have sort of this inaudible sidechain that always plays. So 
So here comes Nexus. This lead on its own doesn't sound uh, powerful enough to me. So I usually, I usually layer my leads with multiple different scents. One of my go-tos, <laughs> I know what's coming, I know I'm using it. It's uh, the Sam in Heaven one, which I'm assuming is supposed to take after um, uh, Heaven by DJ Sammy. Classic trance song. One of my favorite songs of all time, one of my favorite synth sounds of all time. Just trying to remember where it actually was. There it is. Now, I don't want this to sound exactly the same because I've got this kind of constant low tone on the other synth, but I want this one to be a bit more stabby, so I'm... Every time there's a top note, I'll put in one of the bottom notes and it'll be a bit sort of stabby. See, I like that sound. That's one of my favorite synths of all time. Let's get them both playing at the same time. Oh, forgot to change the root note on Nexus. So there's one thing you really have to kind of look out for when you're using Nexus is that, well, at least Nexus in FL, because when you draw notes out in FL, the velocity at the bottom is not always right up to the top. What happens with Nexus is that the velocity usually affects um, the cutoff filter in Nexus. So when you when you don't have the velocity all the way up, it's it's like you're kind of limiting the the high end of the sound in Nexus. So you got to crank that velocity up, or otherwise it doesn't sound right. So now we've got two layers of leads. What's next? Serum again. Let's, uh, this is when I start making the bass sound. So I already had the idea in my head that I wanted to make kind of a reverse bass. I've been doing that a lot because I find that kind of bass to be really easily made in Serum. It's really easy to make some cool sounds in Serum. It's one of the things I love about it. And sort of hooking up the, like what I'm doing now, hooking up an envelope to the wavetable position, you can create some awesome, awesome sounds with that, that effect. I mean, that, itself, that there itself sounds kind of cool and dubstepy. Not exactly what I'm going for. So I'm just going to copy those, um, just sort of try to remember those notes. Also, I need to change that root note. So now with reverse basses, I don't make them exactly offbeat. I sort of, um, sort of put them there and sidechain them or envelope them in a way that they do sound offbeat, even though they aren't placed offbeat. That's right, they go there. Find that there are 
reverse is just a little bit too too long. I have to shorten that up so it sounds right. And that is essentially the bass line, the tune. So I still sort of tinker a lot with the with the bass to get it sounding right. Sometimes I just sort of loop through oscillators to sort of sound hear what sounds good. I think this is what I end up using. sort of put the uh, the envelope on the opposite side of the wavetable. And a nice sub layer. This is pretty close to what I end up with. So I add some stuff to it, I think I put uh, camel fat on it for some distortion. Get some distortion on that, that sounds nice. That sounds a little bit too mono for me, and another thing that I do a lot, I'll just have a listen to this. I don't use Bitcrusher as much as I used to, so I don't like the uh, the mononess of the the sound. So I sort of get my imager in there and just sort of widen things out a bit. I'm gonna make that side change just a little bit more um, powerful. There's a little bit of high end that's sort of detracting from the, the sound, so I try and filter some of that out. I've sort of made the um so I've made the essence of what the song is and now it's uh about getting percussion in there. So one thing I've been doing a lot recently is adding snares instead of claps. So you're like oh, oh god what am I doing? So I get this sort of a snare where the clap usually is. Ping pong. 
Turn the volume up a little bit more. There we are. And stereo offset. It's kind of my go to cra crash uh, delay. Use that at all time. And get the open hi hat. Nice sample, actually. Paint that down. How does that sound? I guess I don't like that open hi hat. <laughs> common thing I've heard in a lot of tracks where the clap and hi-hat are sort of sort of panned different sides to each other. So you'll have the hi-hat going a little bit left and you'll have the clap going a little bit right. Ride symbol, absolutely essential. This sounds a little bit too long. Yeah. Got to fill in there. So many of are crap, but maybe not crap, it's sort of unusable for hardcore. I think that's the one I end up using. So what I want to do is, because they're a different tempo than what you're expecting, they're 140. Just fit to tempo using 140 and it'll automatically uh, time stretch it to fit to 175. Now I'm going to want to get a percussion loop in there. The percussion loop I actually end up selecting for this is not in the final version of the song. There's that weird resonant sound in, the, uh, in it that sort of sounds a bit off. So if loops, I'll get them in there and I'll chuck grow speed on them sometimes and uh, do the quarter beat gate. Yeah, there it is. Sort of choppy sounding kind of thing. really it. This is what the chorus for Against the World uh, sounds like. This is how it sort of came together. It, um, I didn't really record any of the other stuff like the, the full song um, structure and the crappy vocals that I did. <laughs> um, if there's anything you guys want to want me to show you um, go into more detail with just uh, leave a comment let me know. There's probably going to be a few people watching this that are so much better than me going what the crap is he doing? Um, that's shit. That's bad. And that's true. I'm, I'm, I'm not the best, but I feel like I do have something to, to teach the people who are sort of trying to make this kind of music. And there really isn't a lot of material out there for UK hardcore production or happy hardcore production, whatever you want to call it, hardcore rave production. <laughs> So if you thought this video was crap and that I could explain certain things a little bit better, by all means, tell me. So I hope this video has been kind of useful to anybody who's sort of getting into UK hardcore production or um, anybody who is interested in how I make music. So I want to do more videos like this, um, sort of showing production in FL. So if there's anything you guys want to see, uh, let me know in the comments and um, I'll see what I can do. And I'll see you guys in the next video.